there remains volatility in the oil price, particularly around OPEC's meeting later this fall <coughs> and the uncertainty as to whether supply cuts will be made by OPEC nations. The reduced deficit also takes into account lower than anticipated program expenses of $111 million. But we are still facing significant increases in debt expense as well as the current assumptions of pension and post-employment benefits from the province's actuary. So let me expand on some of the significant changes to revenues and expenses. And let's begin with revenues. Personal income tax is up about $55 million from the budget forecast, primarily due to the higher 2015 tax base. Corporate income tax revenue has been expected to increase by over $51 million compared to the budget forecast, and this is primarily due to changes in offshore and federal payments. Oil royalties, which were forecast at budget to be over $500 million, are now projected at over $600 million due to slightly higher than anticipated oil prices and a small production increase. Total production is expected to increase to 70 million barrels. And on the expense side, program savings of $111 million were achieved due to lower than anticipated program spending. But increased debt servicing costs of $130 million leave us with a significant, or a slight increase on the expense side of $20 million. Our government is focused on achieving more efficient public sector operations. We are committed to achieving our deficit reduction targets by eliminating waste and employing an overall approach that ensures all spending decisions are justified on a year-by-year -year basis with no automatic assumptions about spending from year to year. And since we took office, we have been closely reviewing the structure of government and identifying opportunities to streamline. Continuing this course, we will pursue a flatter, leaner, management structure within the provincial government. As I've already mentioned, the projected oil royalties for this year are expected to increase by $99 million. And these projections are based on an average oil price of $45 US and a 77 cent exchange rate. While oil prices were slightly higher than projected so far the year, we know all too well the volatility associated with both oil price and production. And it is for this reason that we cannot depend on fixed oil royalties for our general budgeting process. We will not allow oil revenues to mask our realities. As promised at budget time, we reviewed the temporary gas tax. This tax was implemented just four months ago. And given the continued seriousness of the fiscal situation and the fact that this implementation is just four months ago, we continuously review the gas price and the data and we will complete a review again in budget 2017. Government's borrowing requirements for this year were estimated at $3.4 billion. That amount has been reduced to $2.9 billion due to higher revenues and deferred cash flow from infrastructure projects. 
Given our decision to include a $350 million prudence amount in the boring projections for this year's budget, the June cost update for Muskrat Falls did not increase our boring requirements for this year. And further to that, we are pleased to have already secured 71% of the boring requirements for this year. As we have said since the budget and again today, our government remains committed to achieving the financial targets set in budget 2016, including a return to surplus in 2022. As decisions are made, the public and key stakeholders will be informed on future actions to reduce spending, to increase revenues through economic diversification, as well as the outcome of our ongoing dialogue with the federal government related to our fiscal situation. Now, as you will see from this slide, our economic indicators are generally on par with what we budgeted uh, as part of our budget projections. We did see a slight decline in economic activity, but we are pleased to say that the province's population has increased by 3,000 people. I'll touch on a few areas, um, but further details are available in the Economic Review publication, which is also being released today. Expectation for real, real GDP growth is slightly higher, slightly lower than was expected at budget time. This is because higher than expected oil production was insufficient to offset lower than expected major project investment and lower than expected employment and labor income. It is worth noting that the Canadian GDP forecast has also been revised downwards by 3%, by 0.3%. Housing start expectations are on par with the budget forecast. And as I've already mentioned, our population is higher than forecasted at budget time by approximately 3,000 people due primarily to increased migration. So before I take your questions, I'd like to take a moment to thank my caucus and cabinet colleagues who are in the room today, as well as the people of the province. This has been an, a very um, important process for us as a province. And the people of the province understand that the fiscal situation we are facing with requires thoughtful attention. Before I take your questions, I also want to take a moment to thank the Department of Finance for their continued hard work on behalf of the people of the province. Our government is pleased that we have improved our fiscal performance and the Premier will be releasing a vision document in the coming days that will provide clearer plans for growing the economy and providing quality services while restoring fiscal balances. And our government will continue to practice strong fiscal management on behalf of the people of the province. The seriousness of the fiscal situation remains and needs to be addressed. And we remain committed to the fiscal targets set out in the budget of 2016 to return to surplus in 2022. Thank you. And I'll take your questions. So the state is there will be no change in the gas tax until the next budget next spring. The gas tax um, has been in place now for just four months. And based on the data that we have, uh, that we've been reviewing as we had promised the people of the province we would do, uh, we will be uh, continuing that review and uh, we'll make further announcements on that as part of budget 2017. Was there any review of the deficit reduction levy? The deficit reduction levy is scheduled uh, as per legislation to be eliminated uh, December of 2019 uh, and we had made significant changes to the original uh, plan for the deficit levy. Um, so right now that legislation is in place uh, for, that, uh, for that amount. 
when you spoke to us at budget time, you said the fall fiscal update would be an opportunity to introduce new measures. You're not seeing any introduced here today. Why the change? Um, we remain very committed to addressing the um, situation that we are faced as a province. When we announced our seven-year fiscal targets, we realized that to get back to surplus from the deficit that we have, uh, we said it was going to take seven years. Uh, this is a process that requires um, decision making that's thoughtful and reflective of what people are, are telling us and what we're hearing uh, from the people that we're elected to represent. And we will continue to use that information to make the decisions. And when we make decisions, we will update stakeholders. But let me be clear, we are committed to a more efficient public service operation that allows us to close the gap on our deficit. But why not announce any measures now? Well, we have made some announcements over the summer and we'll continue to make announcements through the fall. The Premier will be announcing in the next uh, number of weeks our long-term vision for the province and included in that will be very specific measures about how we intend to grow revenues through economic diversification how we will be looking to improve the public service efficiency and what our vision is for the long-term future of our province. You, um, in, in the budget this spring, uh, your, your deficit forecast put about a $250 million uh, cut as the target for 2017. Will the, the measures in the vision document make up that $250 million? As I've said, uh, today and other points during the year since the budget, we are committed to our fiscal targets, our financial targets that we communicated in um, the budget this year, and those targets remain in place. So the deficit will definitely be no more than $800 million next fall? The, our plan is to, or are committed to the fiscal targets that we set in the budget. Minister, what about what happened at Muskrat Falls this weekend, the possible increase in cost of that project? How will that impact what you're going to do with the spring? Well, NALCOR and officials are working now on what those costs might be um, and when we have that information, uh, we will provide that information to the people of the province. Uh, this year's um, ca fiscal year, uh, we've provided uh, the information as we've disclosed it today. Um, you know, one of the things about this project though, and not only do we have a responsibility uh, from a fiscal perspective, but equally, and some would argue, more importantly, we have a responsibility to operate a project uh, that respects the social license that you need to be able to operate in our, our communities. And that is something that our government is very aware of and very committed to. We've made a commitment uh, to the Aboriginal communities and we intend to make sure that we fill that commitment. Why is debt servicing why is the cost of debt servicing up so much higher when the actual borrowing needs haven't really changed? Yet? Sure. Well, there's there's two things in that number of 130 million dollars. It would include any increase uh, in the cost of borrowing uh, as compared to what we had forecasted, so and higher interest rates. Then. And additionally, it would also include revisions to what the costs associated with um, uh, post-employment benefits would be that we carry on our books. Donna, did you want to add anything? No, that's, that's correct, Minister. There was a significant increase when the actuary updated the public accounts relating to the unfunded pension liability and the other post-employment benefits. So that added significantly. The uh, number was around $170 million, and offsetting that was uh, some actual savings on our interest mm -hmm. uh, due to the Auditor General has allowed us now a change in accounting policy uh, that allows us some of our bonds uh, in order to borrow them, we had to discount them, and so the cost of that gets spread out now over the life of the. So that was that was a change there. Okay, so just to be clear, the actual the borrowing costs are actually lower than expected, but there's much higher pension liability issues. So right. that's so the increase is actually on the pension liability side, mm -hmm. not on the the debt. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you. The uh, public accounts last week had the conventional borrowings exploding from five and a half billion up to nine billion in just one year. Are you concerned that, that this borrowing, all this borrowing, is getting out of control? Well, the borrowing that uh, for this particular year, as I said earlier, we had forecasted it to be 3.4 and we're moving that uh, number down to 2.9. However, in our seven-year plan, there continues to remain a significant amount of borrowing that needs to happen while we uh, run deficits uh, until we bring the province back to surplus. 
Um, I think levels of borrowing uh, in the past have been, uh, you know, certainly accumulated, and we have um, a debt uh, burden, um, which is uh, significant for our province. I would like to share that for, you know, details on the debt, uh, we have an investor relations website now launched uh, on the government uh, website under the Department of Finance, which discloses all of the information around uh, the debt and the bonds so people of the province can see exactly what the debt is that we're carrying in great detail. Are you concerned as to lead to more credit rating downgrades? Now? I've had um, several conversations this year with the rating agencies explaining to them and answering their questions on our financial situation. Uh, we continue those conversations uh, as recently as last month and we'll be speaking again um, after uh, the Premier makes his announcement around the vision and the actions that we'll be taking as part of that. Um, we are working very hard to protect the rating uh, that we have now um, because it's important activity for us to keep the cost of borrowing uh, as low as we can, considering we continue to have to borrow as a province. With the kind of um, cuts that are going to be necessary, or, or the, the kind of action that's going to be necessary to hit your deficit targets, are you convinced that can be done without uh, reducing the quality of services to citizens of the province? Our focus, as the Premier has said, as we have said as a, a cabinet, as recently as the uh, Way Forward event that we had back in October, um, is to make sure that we are providing quality services to the people of the province, uh, focused on outcomes that we are uh, expecting uh, to be able to deliver, and that's going to require, um, you know, innovation, uh, and it's going to require um, uh, collaboration, and we are confident that we can achieve the targets that we'll be setting out uh, in the coming weeks. Well, will there be service reductions? We don't expect that the, um, the, serv the quality of service that we provide to the people of the province Will be, will be anything but what they expect and what they deserve, which is quality services in the public sector. And so you mentioned the platter or leaner or management structure. Will that mean job cuts? The uh, changes that we will make with regards to uh, management structure uh, have yet to be uh, fully um, uh, determined. And out of respect for our employees, we'll leave those announcements until and those details until those decisions are made. I'm not going to answer that question. How are contract talks with public service unions going? We have um, been in contact with the public sector unions. Uh, we are looking forward to getting to the table and bargaining uh, in good faith. Um, we need to have di dialogues that are about, uh, you know, what's um, in the best interest of the employees, but also what's uh, in the best interest of the province uh, based on the fiscal uh, reality that we face. Uh, we, know, we have been in communication with NAEP and CUPE, and we are expecting to be at the table uh, in latter November uh, with those unions. And we are looking forward to sharing with them our proposals, and we are looking forward to, sh to receiving from them uh, their proposals. So bargaining hasn't actually started yet for November We have been in discussions about uh, protocol agreements and, and other uh, parts of the bargaining process that must be uh, happening, and we're working through that with the unions now, and the meetings are scheduled for November. In September you said you wanted, in September Sorry. you said you wanted it done by the end of, uh, to start by the end of September. Why mm -hmm. is it a month delay? Um, well, there have been dialogues happening around the, um, the things that have to happen in order to set the structure up to do the bargaining. And, uh, you know, the unions have been very uh, uh, cooperative with us on that, and we'll have those conversations uh, on the actual terms and conditions around employment that we want to have at the table. Um, but there's a process that has to be established, and we wanted to be uh, respectful uh, of that, and I believe we have. So you're exchanging proposals in November? Is that the next step? Our intention is to exchange proposals in November. The nurses union wasn't served notice in time, but back in the spring you said that you were still going to try and talk to them and mm -hmm. get them at the table. What ended up happening there? Have they agreed to reopen the, the contract negotiations or you stuck with the contract they had? Um, the uh, nurses union has indicated to us that they would not participate in the existing tables that we will have um, and we obviously respect that, uh, that, that choice. Um, however, we will be keeping them apprised of the uh, dialogue that we have uh, so that they uh, will have the information and uh, certainly they're welcome at any time to join us in any conversation and we include them in all invitations uh, where we feel there's information sharing that's of value to both 
those that are representing the nurses as well as uh, information that we're sharing with other unions. Um, yes, um, I think earlier this week the uh, finance minister in Quebec announced a $2.2 billion surplus and I think if I remember correctly uh, they also receive $10 billion worth of equalization. I'm sitting here telling the people of the province that we are going to target a $1.6 billion deficit and we receive zero equalization. I was disappointed to hear um, that information about Quebec. I think we can do things a little differently uh, under Canadian values than um, trying not to support our neighbors. The Premier is in Ottawa uh, today. Will he be meeting with the federal government to discuss the issue of the loan the loan guarantee is a very active file uh, for the Premier and for our Cabinet. Um, we have all been working very hard on the federal loan guarantee, as I'm sure the federal MPs have been working on uh, the federal, uh, our request for an enhanced loan guarantee. And we are continue to be optimistic uh, that the federal government will understand the situation and circumstances that Newfoundland and Labrador find uh, ourselves in today and we look forward to a positive resolution on the enhanced federal loan guarantee. Is an equity stake a possibility? The federal government having an equity stake in Muscat Falls? There's been, to my knowledge, there's been no discussions of that. People had been expecting, back in the spring when we talked about a supplemental budget, people had been expecting cuts to come in the fall. Should we expect cuts, substantial cuts to happen in the spring? I think that the time that we said we were going to take to solve the deficit problem needs to be understood. This is a significant uh, financial situation that we have in our province and it's going to take time for us uh, to get as a province working together as a community to get that that problem resolved. That's why we targeted a seven-year return to surplus. Um, we do need to do work and look to provide public services in a more efficient and leaner way and as we work to that uh, those announcements when we make those decisions uh, being driven from our government renewal initiative and being driven from the uh, premier's vision statement coming up in the next couple of weeks uh, we will be making those announcements as uh, to the stakeholders affected and then to the people of the province um, these are important uh, discussions that we have to have and we'll continue to make sure that we are uh, addressing um, what really is um, and continues to be a spending problem. What do you say to the people who, who criticize the government and say essentially that you lost your nerve because the phone numbers went down? Um, I think that having knocked on doors and asked people for their support to be elected, that many of us uh, were um, awestruck by the, the, the situation that we had to face. But I can assure you that our resolve as a government and our Premier's resolve as a leader is such that we know our responsibility as elected officials is to address the circumstances that we are faced with and we will continue to work together as a cabinet, as a caucus, as a government to address that. Thank you, everybody.